Fred, you're only the second non-Italian to lead uh, Ferrari in Formula One. Has it been a, a, a different kind of experience for you, do you think, from your predecessors? This is difficult to judge. And first, I don't want to speak about the past, that uh, uh, the fact to be a non-Italian, uh, you have the pro and cons as uh, every single situation that uh, I'm struggling a little bit with my Italian and it's not uh, the, the best to, to build up the relationship with the, the mechanics on track and so, but... Um, <laughs> But in the other end, it's also cool sometimes to have a kind of distance and uh, time for reaction and uh, a bit less of emotion. And so that it's, uh, I think it's a good way to manage the situation. It must have its advantages in the way that you experience the pressure, I would have thought. Yeah, because you are a bit more distant and the time of the translation sometimes is also a... Uh... Thinking time. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is positive. And uh... <coughs> yeah, I don't know that I think it's... Uh, I think at least it's not a disadvantage. Well, that, uh, but uh, I need to improve my Italians to be able to have a beer with the mechanics. Very good. Um, one of my observations of Ferrari, leading Ferrari over the years, is it's really, really important that the person who sits in your role protects the team underneath, like a kind of a steel umbrella from whether it's what's coming down from the corporate level or what's coming in from the media or, the, or all the other outside forces, should we call it. Um, it seems to me you, you've understood that. How do you actually put that into force yourself? It's a good point that uh, I push the team to take more risk. It means that when you take risks, you do mistakes and it's uh, going together. Uh, but we have to assume the mistakes and uh, my job is to assume the mistake of the team and uh, to avoid to expose them. And uh, But if you are scared about the capacity of taking risk, you take margins everywhere and in your business when you have uh, five cars in one tenth that you are dead. That it means that uh, I spent the last uh, 15 months to, to push everybody to take a bit more risk, to have also a kind of uh, better risk management, uh, for sure, because more will take risk, better will be into the management of this risk. And, uh, and I'm really pleased with the, the step forward that we did over the last uh, year. Um, how do you manage the stress on yourself um, and also apply the right level of, of pressure to the team but without introducing that negativity? Because that's a very fine balance, it would seem to me, um, which could destroy the team, you know, yeah. in many ways. Uh, on myself, I don't need to put pressure because that uh, I spent the last 35 years on my life, of my life on the pit wall. For sure, the pressure is different, the approach is different, but I think sometimes in the past, I had also the, the it was uh, not drive to survive, it was a uh, win to survive, you know, that, uh, and uh, at this stage, the pressure was huge also, because I was putting the company in danger, and so that it's, uh, you have to, to keep it in mind. I think the, the, the story about the pressure into the team is, everybody has the pressure on the grid, everybody is, Ferrari, we don't have to be scared about the consequence of what we are doing. That we have, the, the, you have to manage the risk, you have to manage the, the limit, to be at the limit in every single area. And it's not just about uh, uh, drivers, it's uh, on every single area of the company. But the team perhaps in the past was a bit scared about, as you said, external uh, forces, or I don't know what. what <laughs> What, how do you want to call it? But it's probably my job to manage this, to push them to be a bit more aggressive and then to assume the mistakes when we are doing mistakes. One of the things that's really noticeable with you is that you use humour a lot, certainly externally. Um, tell me a little bit, a little bit about that and that approach. Do you, do you use it internally as well? Um, like this, but honestly, that uh, you can do something very seriously and to 
take it something sometimes a bit more uh, relaxed and that uh, I know that every single team member is pushing like hell, working like hell uh, 24-7 on track and at the factory when we have to bring upgrades and so they are pushing, working uh, uh, seven days a week and so that it means that sometimes we have to be a bit more relaxed but it's not that we are not doing things seriously and that uh, it's, uh, you, can do the, you can do both together. But it helps to get results out of people. Um, my assistant is telling me each morning that we are doing the best job of the world. And you, you have also to keep it in mind that uh, well, 30 years ago when I started, I was not dreaming about the F1, but uh, because I was dreaming about F3. <laughs> but uh, you can't complain when you are doing what we are doing, that uh, I think somehow that uh, you have uh, more and more fans who would dream to join the F1 paddock, who would dream to join a race, that we are there. Honestly, that we are, it's a privilege for me to be there and we have to enjoy what we are doing. Then you can do it very seriously and you can push and you can try to get the best of everybody and to get the best results. But I'm not sure that I would be faster if I was not smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so the team's going well. Obviously, you've, you've, you've made a good car, you, you, you've got good momentum, and operationally, you've improved things. That's, that's clear. How will Lewis Hamilton help you to move that even further forward as a driver? Yeah, but the driver is not... Uh, the contribution of the driver is not just the, 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 the capacity to be fast in the last lap of the quali. Huh? The, capacity, the job of the driver is to motivate everybody, to give a direction for the development, to, to be there at the factory, to get the best from everybody, because that when you have more than 1,000 people, if we are able to extract a little bit more from everybody, it's a huge difference at the end. And I'm really convinced that uh, Lewis will be a performance contributor on every single topic. And uh, um, the combination with Charles will be a very good one. And this I'm really convinced. And it's, uh, at the end, it's a package. It's not just uh, the fact that someone is quick or whatever. That it's, uh, I'm sure that we need also to have the experience of a championship winner that uh, Lewis won. Uh, Seven championship, uh, not in a row, but he's, uh, he's coming with a huge experience, with a huge experience from Mercedes. And this is also important for us because that we need to be able to have a kind of uh, transfer of experience, know-how from the other teams. And in the past, we were a bit isolated and it's not the best way to improve. So obviously you won championships with him uh, back in the day in his junior career when he was 20, 21 years old. Um, he's going to be 40 in January and it can go one of two ways with champions when they get the other side of their 40th birthday. They can either, they can either maintain peak levels, as we see to some extent Alonso today is very, very competitive, or it can, it can be less competitive beyond 40. Are you confident he'll be uh, just as competitive beyond 40? Yeah, for me, uh, more than confident because that... Uh the, mo the difference is the motivation. For sure that when you are 40 or if you are not in a positive environment, you don't have the feeling that you can win, that you can, uh, it's very difficult to keep the motivation that uh, after years and years and years. I'm really convinced that uh, Lewis want to play a central role into the, the game like, uh, with us and uh, now doubt that he will be uh, mega motivated. And I suppose it helps as well, having known him for such a long time, you, you know here, you can help him quickly to adapt to, because he's never raced for a, a team that doesn't speak English as a first language. Not true, he, he raced for ART. Well, and in I, Formula One. I mean. <laughs> good point, good point. <laughs> and uh, if we have the same result, uh, it's okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> it certainly will. Um, so... Um, the Formula One team bosses uh, have often been described 
as a group as the Piranha Club. I'm sure you've heard that before because it, they're always trying to have each other over one way or another. And that's a little bit, I guess, the narrative that uh, Drive to Survive picked up and gives a lot of people entertainment. But one of the interesting things about you is you seem to also have some quite close relationships. I mean, you're good friends with Toto Wolf and you're developing quite a good friendship with, with Zach Brown, it seems. Tell us um, how rivals can be friends in this game and how friends can be rivals. Uh, I, this for me is coming back to the first question that it's that the job is difficult, competition is difficult. It's a bit different to the other sport because that it's every single weekend that we are fighting together and so that and you have a, every single weekend you have a, a story about the stewards or whatever that it means that uh, this is creating a kind of a permanent fight. But we have also to keep in mind that on tons of other points, we are fully aligned on the future of the F1, the development of the F1. And I'm, I'm really convinced that we are doing a good job when we are able to discuss together in a normal way. That it means that uh, I know Toto for 25 years now, that uh, I have a good relationship with, uh, with Zach or with Alpine. Or, but hopefully, I would say that because that we don't, we are not there to to have a world war. Huh? That uh, no, and for the benefit of the F1, I think it's much better if we are able to sit down all together and to find compromise. And and uh, it's also much easier to do the job if you have good relationship with the people around you. And that uh, uh, I'm not looking at all for a fight. That. Uh, well, I'm more than pleased that to have a good relationship with everybody on the grid. What else, Fred, does this team need now in order to make it into a world championship winning outfit? One tenth of second per lap. Where are you going <laughs> to get them from? <laughs> no, no, but this... The, 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 the fight now, it's so tight that from one weekend to the other one, you can move from P1 to P8 or P8 to P1, that Red Bull was struggling in, uh, in Monaco and they came back in Canada, blah, blah, blah. It means that from one weekend to the other one, from an upgrade to the other one, from a layout or a compound or the weather conditions, the grid will change. It means that uh, we have to accept that we, it will be like this to score good points when we are not in a good shape. And it's where we fell also in Canada because it was a, was a tough weekend and we didn't score points. But uh, And uh, we have to keep this momentum and this approach and not to be too emotional. Um, now, the per regarding the performance, the most important is to convince everybody into the company that uh, they are all a performance differentiator. Every single team member will have to contribute to the performance. It's not just the chief aero or the chief engineer. It's everybody at the production to be able to produce a bit quicker, a bit lighter, a bit uh, cheaper, less expensive. <laughs> and, and everybody like this. And uh, if we are all pushing in the same direction with this kind of uh, positive attitude, it will, uh, it will work. It's not steady state though, is it? Because you've got next year, which is not too different from this year. And then it all changes again in 2026. Obviously the cost cap has, has, and other things have brought the field a bit closer together. You worried that uh, 26 opens things up again? And do you need anybody else from outside to help you to get across that line? No, but we don't have to be scared that it's true that with the current regulation, you have a kind of uh, convergence of performance and uh, <coughs> Sorry, now after uh, three or four years, I don't know that uh, we have the feeling that three, four, sometimes five teams could do the pole position. And this is a great feeling for the championship. And even for us as a competitor, you are going somewhere. You don't know if you will be a P1 or P10. This, I would prefer to be sure that I will do P1, huh? but uh, no misunderstanding. But it's in terms of competition, it's a great feeling. Yeah. This, thanks to the stability of the regulation and to the uh, cost cap, for sure that when you open a new regulation, you have always the risk that someone could have a, a big technical advantage, risk or opportunity, I don't know on that. But this is more for a fan perspective. 
as an engineer, I think it's a huge opportunity to create something and to develop something. And it's a, a good feeling in terms of team that, uh, that uh, you have to start from scratch and to launch a new project. Fred, really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having us here in Milano. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you.